let's see we're gonna go over this Dodge here um, this is our 2001 Ram 2500 with the Magnum 5.9 V8 which is the most anemic engine that you could get in this truck uh, it's on a set of I don't know what these are there's 2021 Ram wheels I like them nice new tires uh, Cooper STT Pro Mud Terrain Woobity Wobbities. I uh, got to get some spacers on there. They rub the control arms a bit. But what we want to talk about so the Magnum engines, if you don't know, have a tendency to crack heads. Uh, it's just what they do. Magnum engines do Magnum engine things. LS's tick, Tritons blow uh, spark plugs out. These crack heads. Mine finally at 100 and 42,000 miles this one finally started to do it uh, it's I'm actually lucky because it's not leaking into the crankcase it's burning out through the exhaust uh, the coolant anyway but heads got to be replaced so after doing a lot of thinking and reading and searching uh, got a new new grill on there this guy's getting a uh, full top end rebuild uh, engine out gaskets I'll check all the bearings and do everything like that while I'm in there uh, it's been a really good truck to us for the years that we've had it. We've probably had it about 11, 12 years at this point. Uh, the rear Dana 60 is fully rebuilt with a new power track locker uh, or track lock, whatever the replacement to the original Dana uh, limited slip was. I know they upgraded or replaced or whatever. Um, it was originally an automatic truck. Look, it is a, a Laramie SLT. That makes it super fancy when you got, you know, worn out interior, busted up dash. Man, I, I don't know. How do you even burn the ceiling like that? I, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all. Um, but it's been a really good truck to us. It was originally an automatic. The automatic died as those automatics tended to do in these trucks. And I happen to have a project truck torn down with a fairly rebuilt NV4500 sitting in it. And so NV4500 swap. While I was at it, I rebuilt the transfer case. So rear end's maybe got 5,000 miles on it. Transmission and transfer case in this. Combined usage between the other project truck and uh, what I've got in this one for the transmission. It's probably got about 8,000 miles on it. And the transfer case probably has about six. Um, front end, not a full tear down and rebuild like the back end. This day in 60 spun a bearing. They, these have that issue. Um, but it has been gone through. It's new ball joints, new steering, uh, upgraded to a third gen track bar. I just put brakes on this and I should have upgraded the fronts to third gen brakes but i didn't know about them until later so the rear has third gen larger brakes the front still has the oem brakes but that can be addressed at a later time point uh cruise control works wipers work all the lights work the heated mirrors work now it's road hard put away wet because it's a rugged it's it's just a ragged out work truck but after but the point is, I'm going to do a video series on, engine, on the engine rebuild and maybe some styling features. So the original goal with this truck was I had an old, I had an old Jeep, Kaiser Jeep, M715, uh, five-quarter ton military truck. And I was going to put, they're really close in wheelbase to these Dodges. So I was going to put it on the Dodge, I was going to put it on the Dodge chassis. And I got in a funk and got rid of the project. So I don't have it. We recently moved. I've got space. I've got project money. Looking at old trucks, you know, like a 37 International one and a half ton. I uh, found a couple old Dodge one and a half ton, some Ford one and a half ton. And kind of going with that power wagon uh, from the 50s vibe. Or, you know, like I said, I really like the M715. I even like the Dodge M37. It's just, it doesn't have the load capacity. Uh, but, what I'm thinking, since the engine gave up while we were in the process of moving, and I need a truck, 
I got to rebuild the engine. It's very expensive to go through these magnums for you, you spend a lot of money for very little, but comparing the cost to let's say a diesel swap and finding and sourcing all the parts I needed for the diesel swap, I just wasn't wasn't in the cards. Let me pause this and set this on a tripod so that I can talk to it. Oh, my tripod's in use somewhere else, so I don't have a tripod to set this on. So you're just going to have to deal with me standing here holding this. Uh, but what I'm thinking, since i got to put the money into the engine, the truck's been really good overall. Frame's solid. Body's reasonably solid. I'm thinking about restyling the truck. Um, starting here. Now, in the short term, I have a set of OEM plastic fender flares that are going to go up here. But in the long term, what I'm thinking is cutting them out, cutting these fenders, probably following this body line right here, coming out and down. Obviously, the front bumper will come off. The inner fender liner will come out. But think big, open wheel wells like I said, like the 50s Dodge Power Wagon, the Dodge M37 and Jeep M715 military trucks. So maybe come out a good like four inches out of the body and just bring them way up and out. I might actually, you know, just, just follow right here because it's, it's a good line to start here and then just come up, come over, follow this all the way out and come down. Now something else I was thinking about was taking this corner light out, leaving the headlight, take the corner light out, bring the fender up higher, right here, sorry about that, right here with this, inset it more, because I'm probably going to buy trailer fenders and modify them just because it's cheap and easy, and I don't have a roller and things like that to be doing all this from freehand and from scratch. But come up and bring the curve down here in the front, Still have it stick out a good, you know, like four inches from the body. Just come out and bring it down. To do that, obviously I'll have to come up a little bit higher. But it's it's not, that line is only maybe a half inch. It's only maybe a finger's width uh, up. That would pretty much be the, the front end. I get like an off-road weld-together bumper so that I can cut it to width so that it kind of lines up. Things like that. Um, and in the bed, thinking in the bed... We take, or I take the, I take the rear bumper off. I take tailgate off and build a flat panel tailgate all the way across. Uh, maybe try to find a Dodge emblem from like a 50s Dodge truck or something to go in there, or, or even try to find a Dodge 50s truck tailgate. Cut these guys somewhere in this pinstriping. Um, Maybe above, below, right in the middle, something like that. But I got two good, two pinstripes. I won't say they're good pinstripes, but two complete pinstripes that give me a solid cut point, solid lined cut point that is all the way down the side of the truck and even lines up in the forward body section. So it's not as much guessing and tinkering. The thing is, cut the, cut the panel out, come in, and. This bed liner will have to come out, but under the bed liner, the inner panel is actually stamped in a ton of places to provide structure and rigidity to the inner panel. Cut the outer panel out, get some probably 18, maybe 20, but pro probably 18 gauge steel, and flat panel the side, bring two boxes down here, probably put a flat panel under here, like a like an under, oop, that did not line up well at all. Put a flat panel under here, like an under cap, uh, cap the bottom of it off, and then again, take and put my big wide open fender flares in there. Like I say, probably using trailer fenders or some type of mass-produced, you know, steel already rolled um, commercial fender. From what I can tell is most of them that are sold are a good nine inches wide at, at the minimum. And I've seen them as wide as like 15 inches. So i got a pretty good range there. For the big ones, 
I was actually thinking about buying a uh, tandem axle flare. I think that's what it should be, the, the double wheel flare. Um, and using that because it'll give me plenty of curve and I might even be able to just cut one in half and use one on one side of the truck and one on the other side of the truck. But that's kind of my goal. You know, obviously the taillights will have to be replaced with something. I, I don't know what they would be. This whole section here would get would get boxed down um, with whatever with whatever tubing, square tubing I, I put in. Um, I don't know. Thinking about it. Seriously thinking about it. Because this thing's taken a big chunk of project money uh, between the tires I had to get when I was here. Because this new property does not support uh, highway all terrains. They are they are a no go. It's uh, you just get stuck and everything. So while I had recently, like in the last six months, I just spent fifteen hundred on the takeoff wheels and brand new tires, and I had to go spend another. Uh, they cut me some slack because they kept the old, they kept the tires I had, um, but I spent about twelve hundred on these tires, and now with a couple, sorry about that, a couple of the specialty tools I needed to do some work in here. I'm not sure if I'm going to have to replace cam bearings. I am going to put in a Hughes cam. Um, I'm going to redo the distributor, so I needed a small slide hammer attachment, and I needed the installer for the, the there's a bronze gear inside of there that's got to be, uh, or not a gear, a bronze bushing inside the block that has to be replaced, or should be replaced. When I did fleet work, I used to replace them frequently, uh, but those tools stayed with the previous employer, so that's not, I had to buy them again. But you figure with, go ahead and get it done while you're in there parts. I also needed a fuel pump in this and figured the injectors at 140k are probably on their last leg. Fuel pump, injectors, engine parts, gaskets, all that fun stuff. The radiator has never leaked and never given me a problem, but before we bought this truck, this truck was in a front end collision and the radiator shows signs of damage. Well, that grill's popped out a little bit. Um, so I definitely need to go in there and get the... get that address too and since i'm going through but anyway point of that whole statement was i've got about i don't know I, at the top of my head i've got somewhere between like 32 and 3500 dollars rolled up in replacement parts and uh tools just just to work on the engine that's not counting the first time i bought tires the second time i bought tires nothing else that is that is strictly just the tools and stuff to work on the engine so i figure if i'm i've got this much money sunk into it i might as well make it something i really like and i think body kitting it with that I don't really want to call it mill spec i know i mentioned you know several military style trucks but just that just that older bigger industrial style uh, because I do think that that front end and just with the overall curves of the body in these trucks, it would look good with that older styling. And I want to say I remember back in 94, 95 when this generation first came out, um, they hearkened back to a retro styling could be wrong on that it's you know we're talking 94 95 so it's been been a good number of years but i do believe that was something that the chrysler was doing at the time um but yeah i think that's going to be what it is and uh we'll just have to see how it goes from there